So I'm at my great grandparents' house, and there's a bunch of people just over here. Like, girl, what is? All that is carrying on. I don't know. Anyway, I, I need to go because I need to run some errands for my grandmother and my great grandparents' daughter. And uh, it's just a lot going on. Anyway, um. I'm sorry, I'm quite distracted. It's hustle and bustle. I'm supposed to be talking. And this radio, I keep turning her down, but she keeps turning herself back up. Um, let's talk about let's talk about green leaf. I'm uploading on one phone, recording on the other, so I can't really really get into my notes like I want to. But I'm gonna slide over here and look at them <laughs> just very briefly. Okay, so we're we're divorcing. We're divorcing. Um, by we, I mean Bishop and Lady. Um, you know, they, they wrote up their, their draft for what they're going to tell the church. And for some reason, I thought that it would be um, revisited. Like, let's just hold off the divorce, James. And let's, something like that. But that, that, ain't, what, that ain't what happened. Because <laughs> Lady May is hell bent. H E W L. Hell bent on. Um, I'm divorcing this man and it's like yeah i get it because he sent you the divorce papers first and uh, listen if somebody sends me divorce papers i'm divorcing them but also she's so indignant and so self-righteous with it like she ain't never cheated on nobody <laughs> like it's just it's crazy um but anyway she re revised the paper that he gave her to um you know for what they're gonna read to the church come sunday to let everybody know we are divorcing um, so she re revised it and they having this big argument about whether who who finna leave the church and all of that is so stupid to me because girl lady may we've been watching this show for three seasons and we ain't never seen lady may take such interest in the church never never we've seen her be messy we've seen her be messy with the church members but i ain't never seen her take interest in the church so it just it don't make sense to me there are some first ladies man is whipping that thing good lord there are some first ladies that i've seen in my own personal life because as some of you may or may not know um my great grandparents who i'm leaving right now to, to go and attend to uh, my grandparents my great grandfather is a bishop been a bishop all everybody life <laughs> he um at this point is a bishop emeritus meaning he is not active as a bishop but that's only been in the last what like three four years and he's still very much regarded as a bishop. He wears his bishop outfits and goes and do his bishop things. Um, so I know the life of a bishop. I know the life of a first lady. I know, and not just from his uh, perspective, but I know a bunch of other bishops and first ladies, pastors and first, first ladies. And so I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I personally have seen, mine eyes have seen the glory of first ladies who do, um, take pride in their church and, and are active in the church in a way that if they divorce their husband or if their husband divorced, if they got a divorce um it, it would be a fight as to who would get the church or I would imagine there would be a fight as to who would get the church but Lady May I don't think so <laughs> I just don't I don't see it and maybe I'm tripping actually I'm gonna go this way because girl I can't nobody Anybody got time? I was gonna go over here and get these fries, but I'm talking to y'all and they're gonna be cold and uh, the ghetto. So I'm gonna go run this errand for my grandmama and then come back and get the fries. That's what I. That's what I believe. Um. Anyway. <laughs> so they they working on this divorce um, decree. <laughs> what they're going to tell the church. And all in all, when we got to the part, part where they got up in and told it, I was like, what did y'all read? What did what did y'all say? Like, they had to be revised. Anyway. Um, in the meantime, girl, Charity. 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 I just... Y'all know I gave her a lot of slack seasons one and two. I was like, you know, we love Charity over here. <laughs> you know, we, we not going to drag her. Well, baby, your whole child was screaming and you was asleep. Your big old gigantic baby. Did y'all look at that baby? That baby was my size. I was like, where y'all get this human-sized baby? <laughs> baby? This adult human-sized baby? Who that baby was big? But he was crying. And I'm like, you ain't hear this big grown man in here crying. Yo, big grown man in here crying. It's just, 
And so her mama wakes her up and is giving, did you take something? And you know, Jared is, I took a sleeping pill. And I just, I couldn't rest, so I took a sleeping pill. And then here come uh, Lady May giving. I kind of agree with Kevin on the fitness of your, <laughs> your parenting. And I'm like, as much as I don't want to, as much as I don't want to agree because when Kevin started making accusations about her fitness as a mother she wasn't doing nothing now I have to agree and it pisses me off it, it makes me mad because it's like when he first started accusing her of not being a great mother or a good mother or um, the kind of mother <laughs> that he wanted for his child after he left you, you know it's a, run, it's a runway you're supposed to run okay all right well <laughs> anyway um after he left his child and started making these ac accusations i was like the nerve the unmitigated called the audacity of this nigga who went on a eat pray love <laughs> went on a, a sisterhood of the traveling pants excursion uh to figure out what he already figured out when he was at the house because he had sex with that man in a house so i'm just like what what was the trip about and that's the thing really they present us with so much good material that people often forget certain instances. Of, I would have liked to see what all Kevin was doing on this, this journey to self-discovery. Through this journey of discovery, in finding you, I'm finding me. Sing, now that I have someone special who brings out the joy inside of me, inside of me. Um... What all was he doing on this journey of discovery and why he couldn't take oh, this ain't it. why he couldn't take his child with him? That's the thing. Like, you had already done had sex with this man in the house with the baby a couple doors open. So what what was this journey you done took? And you come back accusing charity when she wasn't doing nothing of being unfit as a parent. And now she's unfit as a parent, and I have to side with the nigga who made false accusations. It pisses me off. It makes me upset. But anyway, she and that girl and Lynn Whitfield and gave her, you know, fever. And Marisol was giving fever too. And I'm like, Marisol, sweetness? No, no. I understand you've been in the house for Lord knows how long. Uh, but no, ma'am. <laughs> like, I can cuss my kids out, but you're not going to be in here giving my daughter fever. That's how I am. But anyway. Um... So Charity's doing the most. <laughs> Long story short, she's doing the most. And what made no sense is Lady May and Marisol made like they was gonna take the baby on, and you just don't deserve this baby. Get yourself together, and then you know get the baby. But then later on in the episode, because I'm gonna get Charity right on out the way. Y'all know how I do. Um, later on in the episode, Lady May come knock, knock, knocking on the door, talking about Charity. I'm coming in. Charity sitting there with a glass of wine, and um. She she looking there and say, you know, Charity says, Nathan is. A, I just put him down for a nap. He's fine. Everything's fine. And I'm like, I thought y'all was taking the baby. I thought y'all was finna carry this baby on somewhere. The way they was acting. Anyway, <laughs> um, long story made longer, cause girl, like I said, I'm not able to access my notes right now, cause I'm driving, I'm uploading, and I'm recording all at once. Um, but long story made shorter but kind of long long story the same length as it was Eon <laughs> and I screamed because it, you know we had that, that week uh, break and my mind kind of got off green leaf because we had Empire Star come back and American Horror Story Lord Jesus and just everything be going on on Wednesdays um, so my mind had kind of left green leaf so when a lady maid knocked on Charity's door and said I have someone here <laughs> to to speak to you not this police officer Lord is he what is he doing, Jesus? Don't. I understand that I'm speeding, but don't do that. Okay, he ain't doing it. <laughs> anyway, um, I have someone here to talk to you. And she steps fully in the room, and then we see, hello, beloved. <laughs> and I screamed. <laughs> I screamed. Y'all know I stand for Yala and her antics and her foolishness. She get on my nerves, but she my favorite. <laughs> like, we all, we're all aware that Yala gets on my nerves, but she my favorite. And when she walked into the room, because I forgot she was even supposed to be on the season, and it's crazy because I've been waiting for this for the, for the longest time. Oh, 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 for the longest time. Um, but girl, when she walked in that room and said, hello, beloved, I said, Lord Jesus, it's Annie. Annie came in, honey, and sat down. 
and said she didn't she did see she didn't give it the traditional Ianla treatment this was fictional I, uh, Ianla this was fictional Ianla um she came in she sat down and was like so what's going on beloved tell me and Charity goes on to say that you know stuff is hard for her she having a difficult time like yes girl we get it um and then she said she you know was married to Kevin and, and Ianla said what well, you know why was you married to this homosexual <laughs> and Charity said well how you know he was homosexual and Yana said there's already a question on the floor beloved <laughs> I said I personally stand <laughs> there is already a question on the floor beloved it's a question on the floor <laughs> and girl all in all Charity said Kevin made her feel safe and I was like so you did know why did I stop here what happened so you did know he was a homosexual Cause she said she didn't know it. Yana was like, I find that hard to believe. And I'm saying like, well, some people are stupid. <laughs> some people can't see gay. Everybody don't have the gift. I personally can look and see gay. I just look and I be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> but everybody don't have that, that gift. Um, and I'm sorry. No, that doesn't make you stupid. That just makes you unable to see gay. <laughs> I did just say that everybody, some people stupid. Anyway, the, the moral is she says, um, Instead of answering whether or not she knew that man was gay, she said he makes me he made me feel safe. And I took that to mean she did know he was homosexual. And then I took that to mean, for me personally, Heffa, why was you acting such a fool when you found out that your gay best friend was gay? Maybe I took it wrong. Maybe she didn't know he was gay, but he still made her feel safe. But in the way she said it as an answer to the question about his sexuality made me feel like she had chosen to believe that he was heterosexual, very much like Athena Bernardino on 911. Y'all know your husband is gay and you marry him anyway and have some babies. Now, that don't make no sense to me unless y'all have an arrangement. Would I marry a gay man? Probably. But that's because we would have a good time together. Not sexually. I don't really need that from you and you don't need that from me either. But <laughs> we could go shopping. Uh, we can honey watch RuPaul together. Well, I ain't really doing too much RuPaul. He got so much going on, girl. He's, I'm not doing a lot of RuPaul. But we can watch Pose together. Like, honey, I could marry a gay man and live a very fulfilled, happy life. Um, everybody ain't able. <laughs> everybody is not. But the, just the way she answered that question in response to that, that I don't know, girl. I, it felt to me like she knew. And it, then it felt to me like, why is you? Why is you all up in arms about him being gay? Secondly, why is you follow, why was you following behind that other gay man, Jabari? If gay men make you feel safe, go to the gay club and have a good time. You don't have to be in romantic partnership with homosexual men because that don't make sense, Charity. It don't make sense. Gay men make me feel safe as well. <laughs> they do. Gay men and trans women make me feel very safe. I don't personally seek them. Um... I don't really seek anybody for friendship, but I don't seek them for a uh, romantic partnership because, honey, generally, that's not it. <laughs> so, anywho. But anyway, Iyana goes into, when did you stop feeling safe, beloved? When did you, you know, need someone to make you feel safe? Why aren't you, why don't you feel safe? And the answer to me was a little strange. The, and, and I turned to my mom and said, I know this is going to be Uncle Mac related. And the thing is, I really, again, with Greenleaf, I wish they would have showed us some more of the conversation. Um, but she says, you know, in front of us, she says that, um, you know, her older sisters didn't feel safe. So she also did not feel safe. And I'm just like, I need more backstory. I need more detail. So you grew up in a house with two older sisters and an older brother. Your oldest sister who we just found out this episode grace is the oldest <laughs> because we never knew if faith was younger than grace we all assumed but we did not know for sure um your oldest sister and your older but not oldest sister both felt some kind of way in regards to mac we all know that mac tried it with grace but grace wasn't having it but apparently faith um was not as um i don't want to say she wasn't as strong but she wasn't as uh, forthright or uh, uh, i don't know i don't want to say I don't want to say because I don't know this girl. I don't, we ain't seen her. Have you seen her? No. <laughs> anyway. Um, but your sisters didn't feel safe. But it, does this mean that something, he tried it with you as well? Because we know he put his hand on Zora's knee. That's probably half the reason she crazy. Um, 
I just, I'm just trying to get an understanding. What I need from you is, oh no, I just ran over a snake, rest in peace. Snake, 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 snakes, ran over snake. I just ran over snake. I just ran over snake, shouldn't have been in the road in the middle of the day. Um, All my hit songs have to do with snakes and we need to talk about that. But why was there a snake in the middle of this good old country road in the middle of this good old country day? Like snake sweetness, girl, what were you doing in the road? That's why you did. Cause number one, it's too hot for you to be in the road. You're cold blooded. You ain't even know you was overheating. You just was. Second of all, it's cars. Cars. So rest in peace, snake, but you was a little bit stupid. Moving along. Uh, um, where are we going? What am I talking about, girl? I've been talking for Lord knows how long. About no Lord knows what. I just I'm trying to get to the I'm trying to understand what was going on with charity like did mac try something or do something to her or is she just she just don't feel safe because her sisters was going through like i don't i don't know <laughs> i just don't know anyway Ooh, hold on wait a minute why my car stop and start like that don't don't try me These old fancy cars, I tell you what. The car stopped on the incline. Why you turn off on the incline? What does that mean? It's not like I put my put the brake on. I had my foot on the brake, but I didn't put it up in park, so you stopping just don't make no sense. It just don't make no sense. Oh, that's a, a neat little desk. And it's out on the, the road to tell my mama. She always looking for uh, little desks and things. Anyway, girl, who cares? Charity. So long story short, girl, Iyala brings Shady on out to the common room so we can talk to her mom and daddy. And um, they tell <laughs> Lady May and Bishop that Charity ain't never felt safe because her sisters didn't feel safe. And Lady May went smooth the hell off. And I was like, where's the, where's the remote? Jeez, I was right here. <laughs> I'm tripping. My mama keeps her remote down yonder. My grandmama keeps hers up yonder. I just don't ever know. Girl, why? So yeah, <laughs> Charity, oop, that ain't it, that's it, Charity um, basically tells her mama, you know, I ain't felt safe because my sisters didn't feel safe, Lady May just snaps, yeah, I, I suppose you told her about your uncle, I was like, but, <laughs> yeah girl, uh, you asked Iyala to come help her do her work, that's part of the work, that's part of all y'all's work, and this, this didn't make no sense because then, um, What's her name, Jesus? What's her name? Lady May went off about, you know, everything is fine and I didn't, you know, you weak and I didn't act like that growing up. And, and see, the real Iyanla, the non-fictional Iyanla would have said, now hold on, beloved. What happened to you growing up? And we would have delved deeper, but Iyanla just, she, you know, eased right on by that because she was only here for charity. That's not how Iyanla works. That's not how Iyanla works. Because for charity to get healed, her mama needs to get healed too but whatever i'm saving all of this goodness all of, all of this good mental energy for tonight's um braxton family values where y'all gets them together or something i don't know but um yeah it was just real fictional with the Yama, but whatever uh lady may went off snapped and charity was just sitting there like oh, this is what we always do <laughs> and even james was like she didn't mean you no harm she wasn't coming for you like that <laughs> like she was it wasn't like that. <laughs> and Lady May was just like, girl, I can't stand you niggas coming for me. You, you turned my oldest daughter, my oldest daughter don't like me. Now my youngest daughter has turned against me too. And it's like, well, she probably don't like you because you don't like her either. The two examples that I've seen of Lady May's children going off and not liking her is because you don't treat your kids with any kind of respect. They not going to give it back to you. That's not how that works. That's not how it goes. When my family disrespects me, I give them very much. Huh. Okay, well, I'll be at the house. You'll be looking for me. You'll want to hang out and, 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 and chill later, but you've disrespected me. And so when you look for me now, know that I'm not coming. It's very simple. That's just the way love goes. Anyway, child, um, it's almost fully uploaded. Look at God. Um... Zora goes in on Sophia, gives her this little partial apology, and I was just like, girl. 
it just don't feel genuine like the apology felt genuine but it still didn't feel genuine genuine it was like I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't realize that you were actually sick but it wasn't like I'm sorry for all my other <laughs> foolishness um so I just really didn't receive it but she wasn't talking to me Zora I mean um Sophia also didn't really receive it because Sophia done <laughs> she, she, honey, she done turned just in the blink of an eye she done turned and I'm saying like that's how you know she was only um she you, when you real saved when you for real real saved when things happen that you don't understand generally you will turn to God in prayer <laughs> I can go to God in prayer you would go to God in prayer you would be um you know knee bowed and body bent um giving God you know all your energy in prayer and then if things didn't work out then you turn on the Lord <laughs> then only then but I ain't seen this heifer pray not once she just woke up found out she had no ovaries and it was like you know what God ain't good at all and I was like you didn't try to seek understanding the Bible says in all that getting get an understand I'm just trying to I'm trying to get an understanding was you saved or was you just going around being uh sweet and innocent and carrying the Bible it just it just don't make no sense to me I don't get it how all of a sudden it's just forget God like girl you didn't even try to seek an understanding you might have was gonna have a demon seed you don't know you might have been about to have a baby who manifests snakes like Langdon on American Horror Story you don't know anyway <laughs> um Maxine is here I don't like Maxine. It's always good to see Patty LaBelle. Wonderful to see you, but I see you all the time. It's like Iyanla. Iyanla and Patty Bell be on it. Patty Bell. Patty LaBelle be on everybody TV show all the time. And it's just like, hey girl. Hey. <laughs> um, Rochelle is also with us. And she's still plotting and scheming. Nothing new there. She's still working with Grace as far as um, you know, trying to get the battered women uh help. So praise God <laughs> like I can't even be mad at that because like she using her evil for good so alright thanks <laughs> um girl what is this she did uh by she I mean what's her name God what's her name Rochelle did shower Rick Fox with all these compliments I still think they know each other I still feel like that's probably her husband like I do <laughs> I do the way she's so bold in flirting with this woman's man I feel like that's probably that's probably her man or whatever um May you know got Zora together told her you don't like yourself because if you liked yourself you wouldn't be trying to get back with this man and put his hands on you and I'm saying like well Lady May in your father's last and evil days you kissed him on the mouth and we don't know what else went on so do you like yourself Let's get Iyanla back in here. <laughs> Bring her, call her back. Iyanla, come on in here and let's, let's get this together. Uh, let's see. Sophia's man comes by and brings her a teddy bear and tells her about the Lord. And I'm seeing like, you really can't minister to me when you got mad at me for not having premarital sex with you. But valiant effort, I guess. It was on my nerves. Um, then Sophia clicks on him when she talk, when he talking about the Bible and how, you know, there were barren women in the Bible who ended up having kids. You just never know. And Sophia goes, I'm not barren. I'm sterile. And I'm saying like, but girl, they both mean the same thing. There's a difference. It's like, but sweetness, not having your ovaries and, and not being able to have kids is a little easier pill to swallow than having ovaries. And not having, not being able to have kids. When you, your your reproductive system is functioning as it should, is healthy, and no signs of anything, and you still can't have kids, seems to be more soul crushing than having a valid reason to not have kids. But the point remains that being barren means you can't have kids, and being sterile also means you can't have kids. Why are you snapping on this nigga? Like I be snapping on him for the way he treated me when I said no. The first time I said no, it's like I never said yes. Beyonce told us. She told us. Um, certainly you can call me, baby. I'd love to hear from you. Yes, of course, you can come and see me, boy. Wanna get to know you more. Shoot, I'm feeling you. 
no baby not yet we can't take that next step why you getting so upset boy you act as though i never told you yes before you are so ungrateful Mm -mm -mm. beyonce sang the mess out of it Ooh, the mess out of that i was at my house you were sitting on my couch anyway (laughs) um the whole relationship with Sophia and her boyfriend, it really, it felt stupid from conception. So, I don't feel any particular way about them breaking up. But she went and told her mama, you know, we ain't together no more. And the mama was like, oh no, he broke up with you. And she's like, no, I broke up with him. I don't want that nigga. And I'm just saying like... So then she goes for a walk. She goes on down to the, the river and she takes off her necklace and throws it in. And I'm like, the river don't want your necklace. These wealthy children throwing their jewelry in, in bodies of water. Girl... You ain't Rose from the Titanic. Nobody, ugh, the ghetto. You don't take that necklace back to your mom and tell her, I don't want this. I don't want this. Throwing it in the water. Ugh, ghetto. Anyway, um, at the church, uh, they give the announcement that they divorced, and right after Charity saying they wanted Charity the same because Lady May says, I still want everyone to know that this is going to be the Greenleaf show every Sunday. No, ain't nobody worry about y'all niggas. Nobody, nobody care about it. Nobody care about it. Um, but they get up there and say, we divorcing and I'm still going to have a day with Lady May. And featuring my dear friend, Maxine Patterson, that y'all didn't know was my dear friend because I ain't talked about her none until right now. But she is my dearest of friends. We ain't seen each other in 40 years, but she is very much my dear friend. Dear friend. Um, it just uh, the whole Maxine Patterson storyline feels very forced to me. I just uh, the ghetto, but you know we just needed Patty Patty Labelle to come on in and say hey. We could have really had Patty Labelle play May's mama in some flashbacks and get some understanding about why, what what's going on, the pathology, beloved. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. They said they was divorcing, and then after service, uh, Grace is walking down the hallways and everybody talking about how the pastor and the first lady finna get a divorce and she feels some kind of way because for some reason she felt like they weren't gonna talk about that after service i don't know and girl that's all i want to talk about like comment subscribe and all the things the youtubers saying i will i will catch you in the next one peace